figured I'd make one more dirty video before cleaning up my desk. Today we're durability testing the brand new Samsung Z Flip 4, the smaller and cuter sibling to the Samsung Z Fold 4. If I had to pick between the two, I'd probably go with this smaller flip form factor, assuming of course that it can survive the few little stressful situations that I've arranged for it today. At right around $1,000, it would be a real shame if it were too fragile. Today we'll find out. This video is sponsored by Audible. Let's get started. Just like when we opened up the fold, we are immediately greeted by a long list of things we cannot do. And the list all by itself kind of makes the Flip 4 seem fragile. But I'm going to need to do my own research on this one. The phone itself is nice and big when it's opened, and when closed, it's all nice and small. And that about sums up the whole experience. When the phone is closed, we are left with a 1.9 inch cover display on the outside, which is capable of performing some basic tasks, but we'll get to that more in just a second. First, the scratch test. One of the smaller scratch tests we've ever done for sure, but it is nice to know what the screen is made from and how careful we need to be with it over time. Plastic screens are a level 2 or 3, glass is a 5 or 6, and sapphire would be a level 8 or 9. Let me know if you want to see Samsung's new sapphire watch tested down in the comments. As we can see on this tiny rectangle, there are some scratches at a level 6 with deeper grooves at a level 7, meaning Samsung is using tempered Gorilla Glass Victus Plus, which is a rather long name for a piece of glass. The phone can indeed be opened with one hand, but only if my thumbnail is allowed to scrape along the surface of that inner screen. We can see if my nail will be an issue with another scratch test. Samsung is again talking about their ultra-thin glass mumbo-jumbo this time around, but as you can clearly see, the UTG is not what's covering the surface. The surface, again, scratches at a level 2 with deeper grooves at a level 3. It's definitely solidly in the realm of which fingernails are very much able to cause damage to the surface. We'll have to see how many layers down Samsung hid that ultra-thin glass, but it's definitely not doing us any favors here on the top. Ultra-thin glass sounds cool in the marketing videos, but in reality and everyday usage, owners should be very careful of where your fingernails are at, especially if you're trying to operate one-handed. I almost used my pink jerry rig knife to pull the paper off the screen, but it turns out there's a series of magnets that caught my knife along the top edge of the phone, as well as the bottom edge, strong enough that it would be unwise to fight them with my razor, just so we don't accidentally stab the plastic inner screen and end this video early. This also means though that the front 10 megapixel underscreen camera is only protected by plastic. The camera is not hidden under glass or pixels like we saw on the fold. Speaking of protection and marketable terminology, the sides of the Flip 4 are made from armor aluminum, which is aluminum with the word armor in front of it. We have a scratchable capacitive side mounted fingerprint scanner, huge fan of that, and we have a metal removable volume rocker. Up at the top we have more metal with a microphone hole, and down the left side we have the metal SIM card tray along with more metal on the sides. This phone again is IPX8 water resistant, and the pile of dust on my desk is probably making it nervous. The bottom of the phone has our improved 25 watt fast charging USB-C port to help power the larger internal battery, but we'll get to that more during the teardown. Or, you know, maybe sooner if the phone falls apart during this video. And again, Samsung has included plastic bumpers along the inner screen to help keep things padded and safe for that middle display. Samsung says their folding screen has the ability to flex along this hinge over 200,000 times, with no damage. Assuming that the phone is used in a reasonably reasonable manner throughout all those folds. The Samsung lettering is still inlaid. Now, the almost 2 inch exterior screen does have some perks. I'm sure it would be more intuitive if I read some instructions or something, but it does give us the ability to use the more powerful rear cameras as selfie takers and switch between the two lenses with just a swipe. The upper 12 megapixel ultra wide camera is protected by glass, and the lower 12 megapixel regular camera is also protected with that circle of glass. Ah, 
and there are more large matte glass panels covering up and protecting the rest of the phone. A double tap to the exterior screen can also tell us the time, which is quite a big change from the days of our grandparents when a high-tech alarm clock consisted of glowing radioactive radium next to your head while you sleep. There's actually a true story called The Radioactive Boy Scout about a guy who tried building his own nuclear reactor in his mom's garden shed using old smoke detectors, gun sights, radioactive alarm clocks, and duct tape. The audiobook from my channel sponsor Audible is no tutorial by any means. Not that I was looking for a tutorial. I was just, I mean, it's just some crazy stuff. From his mom's garden shed, the radioactive Boy Scout single-handedly exposed about 40,000 people to dangerous levels of radiation. Don't want to be his neighbor. You can give the story a listen for free with a link down in the description. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash jerryrig or text the word jerryrig to 500-500. Audible has a huge selection of audiobooks across every genre, from memoirs to bestsellers, even a massive selection of Audible originals narrated by celebrities or renowned experts. The Audible app makes it easy to listen anytime, anywhere, traveling, working out, walking, or doing chores. Or, you know, maybe even if you're out working in your mom's garden shed. And it's free for your first 30 days. Audible.com slash jerryrig or text the word jerryrig to 500-500. The radioactive Boy Scout is a good one, and the link is down in the description. Turns out, and no spoilers obviously, but one of the only ways to really deal with radioactive material is to bury it. Dirt is good for all kinds of things. Samsung does seem a bit nervous about it though, which is probably why it's not included in their phone's IPX8 water resistant rating. I think it's pretty safe to say though that unless you took a flip 4 and actually buried it in a hole, this is probably the most dust the phone could ever naturally or accidentally encounter. The internal magnets are collecting my screws for me, and now we have dust on the hinge and on the screens both front and back, and it's all still opening and closing just fine. No grinding or grating, and no sounds of dirt on the inside. Yet. I agree that dust is most likely dangerous for Samsung's folding phones, but they definitely don't need to be kept in a clean room to stay functional. And I hope my test provides some peace of mind for the owners. I would however counsel against holding the Flip 4 over open flame. The inner screen is a 1080p dynamic 6.7 inch 120Hz AMOLED, but since it's covered by plastic, the surface would rather deform and melt instead of hurting pixels. The outer display is a 260 by 512 and is covered by glass. And as we can tell from the pixels going white and not fully recovering, it is also AMOLED. Finally, the bin test. Samsung's folding phones are in a weird spot of being extremely durable, while also being extremely fragile all at the same time. And this Fold 4 kind of follows in its predecessor's footsteps. Except for one very strange noise. And a new abnormal reverse curvature. Like you guys hear that, right? The Samsung Flip 4 bends backwards much further than its previous family members and physically pops. But at the same time still remains functional with no visible damage on the exterior. The hinge and two rear slabs of glass lock the phone out and keep it from snapping backwards entirely, but there's definitely something broken on the inside. To the point where the phone, even with its strong magnets, does not stay closed anymore. I think there's something popped out of the channel groove inside of the hinge, but even with all of that abuse, the Flip 4 still remains entirely functional which means it does pass my durability test. I'm pretty sure Samsung changed up the Flip 4 hinge design just like they did with the Fold 4 and removed those internal gears. We'll have to find out for sure during the teardown, along with how many layers deep Samsung hid their ultra-thin glass. Don't forget your free audiobook down in the description. It's rather eye-opening to see how close the radioactive Boy Scout got to making his own reactor. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Come hang out with me on Instagram and Twitter. And thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.